live from Barcelona, Spain, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live Europe. Brought to you by Cisco and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to Barcelona, everybody. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante. I'm here with my co-host, Stu Miniman. Stu, myself, and John Furrier will be here all week. Eric Herzog is here. Longtime Cube alum, friend, great to see you again. He's the CMO of IBM, uh, IBM Storage Division. He's joined by James Ames, who's the head of networks at Advance, the service provider. Guys, welcome to theCUBE, good to see you again. Great, thanks for having us, love being on theCUBE. So, we love having you. So James, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about Advance, we want to dig into some of the networking trends. We're hearing a lot about it here at Cisco Live. Yeah, thanks. So, uh, Advanced are a managed service provider, software uh, software company based in the UK. One of the largest software companies in the in the UK, providing end-to-end -end solutions for lots of different market uh, market verticals, including healthcare, local government, regional government, um, national infrastructure projects we get involved with, as well as charity sector, legal sector, li uh, a lot of education work that we do. Um, so it's a real diverse portfolio of products that we offer. Um, and with the managed services piece, we also offer um, complete IT outsourcing. So this is desktop support, telephony support, printer support, all the way back into integration with public cloud platforms and, and private cloud platforms, the majority of which is our own. So, uh, so Eric, uh, Advanced are both a customer and a, a partner. Right, right, right. A and, and so, you love, you love VersaStack. These guys are, I presume, a VersaStack customer yes, as well. Yes, they're a VersaStack customer, and the VersaStack, as you know, integrates Cisco UCS, Cisco networking infrastructure, IBM storage of all types, entry products up into the fastest all-flash arrays, with our software Spectrum Virtualizer, Spectrum Accelerate family, and James's company is using VersaStacks as part of their infrastructure, which they then offer, as you know, to a service to end users, as James just described. So let's talk about some of the big trends that you guys are seeing and how you're, you're both responding to customers and you're responding to your customers. So we, we are seeing to here and today a lot about multi-cloud. We've been hearing that for a while. The network is flattening. You're a network expert. Love to get your, your thoughts on that. Security, obviously, is a huge topic. End-to-end -end management. You know, another big topic, something that IBM is, is focused on. So, so James, what are, the, what are the big mega trends that you're seeing that are driving your business decisions and your customers' activities? So I think one of the big changes that we're seeing is a change from large scale, enterprise scale deployments of a particular type of technology. Um, and customers are now choosing, because they're informed, the best fit for a particular application or particular service. Mm -hmm. And that may be, coming to a service provider like ourselves to offer our service product to them, uh, or they're looking for us to run an uh, infrastructure service for them, or integrate with a public cloud offering. So the, the, the competition of the public cloud for service providers is, is key. Um, and I think uh, people were looking around a few years ago thinking, how, how do we compete to this? Well, with the partnerships that we have with IBM and Cisco, it gives us a very compelling competitive offering where we can turn around and say, well, we can give you a like for like, but we can give you a slightly better service because we can give you guaranteed availability. We can give you guaranteed price points. And this is all backed with key vendor um, uh, certified designs. Uh, so we're not talking about going out and developing a solution that takes us maybe 18 months to take to market. This is understanding a requirement for a quick uh, you know, Q&A with a customer align that to a reference architecture that we can literally just pick up off the shelf, deploy into our data centers using the standard building blocks that we use across the business. So Nexus, 9K, 7Ks are our standard bread and butter um, inside the data center environment. As Eric uh, pointed out, Cisco UCS is our, our key Intel compute platform that we use. Um, and the Storewise IBM product has been a real true success story for us. Uh, so we started off being a, a mixed vendor house um, where we would align a storage requirement based with what we could find in the market that was, that was a good fit. Um, but the Storewise product has basically just allowed us to standardize um, and the speed of, of deployment is, is one of the key things. Mm. So we started out with a very lengthy um, lead time to, uh, to service ready, which is when we start charging for revenue. Um, and 
Uh, if we were on a 90 day build, well, we've got a lot of professional service time, a lot of engineering time, getting that ready to, to go and take to the customer. Um, and then we turn it on and we can start seeing revenue from that platform. With VersaStack, it's enabled us to accelerate how quickly we can turn that on. Um, and we've seen that drop to you know, literally days through standardization, um, elements of automation as well. Many of our environments are bespoke um, uh, because we have such a wider range of different types of customers with different needs, but it allows us to take those standing building mm -hmm. blocks, align them to their needs, and deliver that service. Yeah, yeah. James, James, we found the, the MSPs are often in the middle of those discussions that customers are having on multi-cloud. So you talked a lot about the services you build. Um, are they also coming to you, if, if uh, do, do you tie into the public cloud services? Yes. Or, yeah, so may, maybe you can help expand a little bit on how that works. Because five years ago, it was, the public clouds are all going to kill the managed service providers and what we see is customers can't sort out half of what's going on. They've got to be able to turn to partners like you to be able to f figure this out. Yeah, that's a fantastic question because I think um, three years ago we'd be talking to our customers and they were, I am going to this public cloud or I am going to build this infrastructure. Whereas now they're, they're making more informed select decisions uh, based on, on, on what's right. The, the drive to the hosted office and voice platforms uh, offered by Microsoft is a big drive and many of our ITO customers are going in that direction. But it's how we integrate that with their legacy applications. Some of the ERP solutions that some of our customers use have, have, have had millions of pounds of investment into them. And that's not something that they can just turn off and walk away from overnight. So it's, it's how we're integrating that and we're doing that at the network level. Um, so it's how we're, we're pairing with different service providers, bringing that in, integrating that, and offering it to them as a solution. Um, and what we try to um, and we try to try and position ourselves is really it's the same experience regardless of where we're placing uh, IT consumption or workload. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's inside our data centers, whether we're talking on one of the public cloud platforms, uh, or even on premise. So we have uh, uh, quite a few uh, customers that still have significant presence on premise because that's right for their business, depending on, uh, on what they're doing, especially with some of the research scientists. So you've got to deliver flexibility in your architecture. I know you talk a lot about software defined. You guys made a big you know, move to software defined you know, a couple years ago, actually. Um, maybe discuss how that fits into how you're servicing advanced and other clients. Sure, so you know, IBM Storage has embraced multi-cloud for several years now. Mm -hmm. So our solutions, while of course they work with IBM Cloud and IBM Cloud Private, work with Amazon, they work with Azure, Google Cloud, and in fact some of our products, for example the VersaStack, not only is advanced using it, but we've got probably 40 or 50 public, small, medium-sized cloud providers that are public references for the VersaStack, and Spectrum Protect, you know, which is our backup product, number one in the enterprise backup space, Spectrum Protect has got at least 300 cloud providers, medium, small, and big, who offer the engine underneath for their backup as a service, is Spectrum Protect. So we make sure that, whether it be our transparent cloud tiering, our cyber resiliency technology, what we do in backup, archive, object storage works with essentially all cloud providers. That way someone like James, you know, a CSP, MSP, can leverage our products, and we, like I said, we got tons of public revenues around VersaStack for that, but so can an enterprise. And in fact, I saw a survey recently, um, and it was done in Europe and in North America, that when you look at a roughly the two billion US size revenue and up, the average company of that size and up will use five different public cloud providers at one time, whether that be due to legal reasons, whether that be procurement. You know, the web is really the internet, and you know, the cloud is really just, it's been around for 20 some years. So in bigger accounts, guess what who's now involved? Procurement. Well, we love that you did that deal with IBM Cloud, but you are going to get a competitive quote now from Amazon and Microsoft, right? So that's driven it, legal's driven it, certain countries, right, the data needs to stay in that country, even if you're cloudifying it, if, so to speak. So if the cloud provider doesn't have a data center there, guess what, another geography is different. And then you, of course, still have some large entities that still allow regional buying patterns. So they'll have three or four different cloud providers that are, quote, certified by corporate, and then you can use whichever one you want. So we make sure that we can take advantage of that wave at IBM, we ride the wave, we don't fight the wave. So you've got, in that situation, you've got these multi-clouds, you've got different APIs, you've got different frameworks. How do you abstract all, all that complexity? You know, you've got you know, Cisco coming at it from a networking standpoint, IBM now with Red Hat is going to be a big player in that, that world. 
VMware. Um, what do you guys do, James, in terms of, uh, of simplifying all that multi-cloud complexity for people? Um, I think some of it is actually demystifying um, and it's engaging with our partners mm -hmm. to understand what the proposition is um, and how we can develop that and align that to not only our own business, but more importantly to the needs of our customers. Um, we've got some really, really talented uh, technicians work within, um, within advance, and we've got a number of different forums that allow them to feedback their ideas, and we've got um, uh, the, the alignments between those partners and, and some of those communities so that we can have an open discussion and drive some of that thinking forward, uh, but ultimately see engaging with the customers. Um, so the customer's feedback is key on how we shape and deliver not only the service to them, but also to the, the service to other customers. We're, we have um, a number of customers that, uh, that are very similar, but they may work in different spaces. Some, some are even competitive. So we have to tread that line very, sa um, very carefully and safely, um, but it is, it, it's a good one-to-one -one relationship between the client service managers, the technical, um, so the, the technicians we have inside the business. Having that complete 360 com communication is, is key. Mm. And that's, that's, that's really the bottom two, it's, it's communication. James, Tim, I'd li like you to dig into security for us a little bit. Uh, you know, I th think we surpassed a couple of years ago. I'm not going to go to the cloud to it uh, because it's not secure. To oh, I understand. It's uh, it's a time for me to at least reevaluate my security. And most likely, you know, managed service providers, public clouds are probably more secure than what I had in my data center. But if I've got multiple environments, there's a lot of complexity there. So how do you traverse that and make sure that you've got a comprehensive security practice, not just all these point solutions for security all over the place? Yeah, um, so that's, uh, that comes down to visibility. So it's, it's visibility, un understanding where all the control points are within a given infrastructure um, and, and how the landscape looks. Um, so we're, we're, we're working quite closely with a number actually of, of key um, Cisco and IBM partners as, as well as IBM and Cisco themselves directly um, to have a comprehensive offering that allows us to position to our customers. You used to, once upon a time, you had one gate, right? So all we needed is some good security on, on, on your internet facing firewall. Well now, you may have eight, 10, 20, 30 of those, we need to have consistent policies across those, we need to understand um, how they're performing, but also uh, potentially if there's any attack, uh, attack vector on one of them, how, that, uh, how someone is trying to looking to compromise that. So it's centralized intelligence, um, and that's where we're starting to look at AI operations to, to gather all that information. The, the long gone are the days where you'd have 20 people sitting in a room just reading screens. Those 20 people now need to, to see reams and reams of information instantly. Something needs to be called up to them so they can make a decision quickly and act upon it. Uh, and, and that's really where we're, we're, we're positioning ourselves in the market to differentiate um, and working with, with key partners to be able to do that. Eric, talk about your announcement, Cadence. Um, got, IBM has a big show, Think, coming up in a couple of weeks. Cube's going right. to be there, of course. Um, what can we expect from, from you guys? So we're actually going to announce on the 5th before Think. Uh -huh. We want to drive end users and our business partners to the storage campus, which is probably one of the largest campuses um, at IBM Think. We'll have over 15 pedestals of demo and actually multiple demos because we have such a broad portfolio from the all flash arrays to our VersaStack offering to a whole set of modern data protection, uh, management and control for storage, which manages and controls storage that's not ours, right? Our competitor's storage as well and of course our software defined storage. So we're going to do a big announcement. The focus of that will be around our storage solutions. These are solutions, blueprints, reference architectures, as Jane mentioned, that use our software and our storage systems that allow a reseller or an end user to configure systems easily. Think of it as the ultimate recipe for that German chocolate cake, but it's the perfect recipe. It's tried, it's true, it's tested, it's been on the Food Channel 27 times and everybody loves it. That's what we do with our, our solutions blueprints. We'll all have some announcements around modern data protection. And obviously a big focus of IBM storage is been in the AI space. So both storage as an AI platform for AI applications and workloads, but also the incorporation of AI technology into our own storage systems and software. So we'll be having announcements around that on February 5th, going into Think, which will then be the week after in San Francisco. Great, so I'm here in Trusted. Data protection plays into that. Um, AI, intelligence, machine intelligence, and I'm also hearing heterogeneity. Um, 
multiple platforms, whether it's your storage, you said, or, or, or competitor storage. Now, does that also include sort of the cloud sphere, without announcing anything, but you guys have, y yeah. you know, you've, I've a seen your pictures, hey, it's Azure, it's, it's, it's AWS, I mean, that continues, yes? So, absolutely, so whether it be what we do from backup and archive, right, let's take the easy one. So we support not only the protocol of IBM Cloud Object Storage, which we acquired and allows you to have object storage either on-premise or in a cloud instantiation, but we also support the S3 protocol. So for example, our Spectrum Scale software, giant scale out, in fact, the two fastest supercomputers in the world use Spectrum Scale, over 450 petabytes running on Spectrum Scale, and they can tier to an object store that supports S3 or it can tier to IBM Cloud Object Storage. So you've had an IBM Cloud Object Storage customer, that's great. If you're using the S3 protocol, you can tier to that as well. So that's just one example. Same thing we do for cyber resiliency. So from a cyber resiliency perspective, we can do things with any cloud vendor of an air, cap, air gap, right? And so you could do that A with tape, but you can also do that with the cloud. So if your cloud is your backup archive replication repository, then you can always roll back to a known good copy. You don't have to pay the ransom. Right, or when you clean up the malware, you can roll back to a known good copy, and we provide that across all of the platforms in a number of different ways. Our Protect family, our new product safe, safeguard copy for the mainframe that we announced in October. So all that allows us to be multi-cloud resiliency as well as how do we connect to multi-cloud backup, archive, automated tiering to all kinds of clouds, whether it be IBM Cloud, and of course I'm a shareholder, so I love that, but at the same time we're realistic. Lots of people use Amazon, Google, Azure, and like I said, there's thousands of mid to small cloud providers all over the world, and we support them too. We engage with everyone. What about SaaS? You know, that's one of the questions we've been trying to squint through and understand is, because when you talk about five cloud providers, there's obviously infrastructure as a service, and then there's, there's service providers like, like Advanced, and then there's like a gazillion SaaS companies. Right, a lot um, of data in there. And a lot of data in there. <laughs> um, how should we think about you know, protecting that data, securing that data, is that sort of up to the SaaS vendor and thou shalt not touch, or should that be part of the, the scope of a storage company? Well, so what we do is we engage with the SaaS vendor. So we have a number of different SaaS uh, companies. In fact, one of them was on theCUBE two years ago with us. They were a startup in the cybersecurity space, and all of it's delivered over SaaS. So what they do is, in that case, they use our flash system product line, they get the performance they need to deliver SaaS. They want no bottlenecks because obviously you have to go over the network when you're doing SaaS. Um, and then also what they do is data encryption at rest. So when the data is brought in, because we have uh, on our flash arrays, the capability in most of our product line, especially the flash systems, to have no performance hit on encrypt or decrypt because it's hardware embedded, they're able to have the data at rest encrypted for all their customers. That gives them a level of security when it's at rest on their site. At the same time, we give them the right performance they need to have software as a service. So we engage with all, we probably have 300, 400 different SaaS companies who are the actual software vendor and their deployment model is software mm -hmm. as a service. By the way, we do that as well. As I mentioned, yeah. over 300 cloud providers today have a backup as a service and the engine is either Spectrum Protect or Spectrum Protect Plus, but they may call it something else. In fact, we just had a public reference out from Silverstring, which is out in the UK, and all they do is cyber resiliency, backup and archive, that's their service. They have their own product, but then Spectrum Protect and Spectrum Tech Plus is the engine underneath their product. So that's an example, in this case, of backup as a service, which I would argue is not infrastructure, but more of an application. But then true, what you call real application providers like cybersecurity vendors, uh, we have a vendor who, in fact, does something for all of the universities and colleges in the United States. They have about 8,000 of them, including the junior colleges, and they run all their bookstores. So when you place an order, all their AR and PR, everything they do is from this SaaS vendor that's based in, uh, they're in the Northeast, mm -hmm. and they've got, like I said, about 8,000 colleges and universities in the US and Canada, and they offer this, if you will, bookstore as a SaaS service, and the students use it, the university uses it, and of course the bookstores are designed to, you know, at least make a little money for the university, and they all use that. So that's another example, and they use our flash systems as well, and then they back up that data in, internally with Spectrum Protect, because they obviously it's the financial data as well as the inventory of all of these bookstores all over the United States at the collegiate level. Right, now James, uh, we, gotta, we gotta wrap, but just sort of give you the final word. The UK specialist, right, so Brexit really doesn't affect you, is that a fair statement, or? Uh, it will do, yes. How, um, how so? 
Uh, I think it's too early to tell. Uh, no one really knows. Yeah. Um, I think that's, that, that's that's what all the debates are about. Yeah. Uh, is trying to understand that. Um, and and for us, I think we're we're just watching and observing. Um, yeah, so it's, it's staying it's focused on your say. customers, obviously. Yeah. So no predictions as to what's going to happen. I was in not UK for me. a few weeks ago. I, I heard <laughs> both sides. You know, oh, it's definitely going to happen. Oh, it might not happen. But um, <laughs> okay, I, again, give you the last word. You know, so what's your focus over the next you know 12, 18 months? Um, so our, our, our focus is really about visibility. Um, so Dave, Dave, Dave touched on that when we were talking about the security. Uh, for customers, understanding where their data is, where their exposure points are, that, that's our key, key focus. Right. And versus Stack and uh, the IBM Storewise product underpin all of those offerings that we have, um, and that will continue to be, uh, to be so moving forward. Guys, great to see you. Thanks so much uh, for coming on theCUBE, and uh, it's our pleasure hosting you. Great, thank, thank you, really you. appreciate You're it. You're really welcome. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back. Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman from Cisco Live in Barcelona.